Cryptillions and Crypto Crackhead Sunday edition. This will be really short here, but this video is about BPRO breaking out here, and this can serve as future reference to viewers coming to us from the future, uh, future to March 14th, 2021, as to how to buy and plan breakouts. So, so first off, we had been going over the five, our five, uh, three most probable and two what ifs um, throughout the past two weeks. And as we were doing that, we saw that BPRO had gone on a pretty big run. Most, we assume it was initiated by the, uh, the weekly 10 exponential moving average <clears throat> crossing above the 21. So red a crossing, uh, crossing above the 21. That typically stimulates a lot of people's bots. Uh, so a lot of people, even retail people, use bots uh, to essentially buy things regardless of the project being abandoned or not. It doesn't matter. They literally just scan all the crypto uh, formations on a specific time frame. And if something happens, then they buy. So it's an if then statement. They, they are not biased towards lo uh, coin loyalty. They don't care if it is some Apple blockchain company, uh, not Apple as an okay, a pair. Pear and Grapes blockchain company that hasn't had a Twitter update in five, year, five years. They don't care. They just buy it. And so uh, we saw that this was uh, the trend here. Uh, and most of the coins have in the space have been following the same trend. So after we after BPRO had gone, let's say from the breakout point, let's call this the breakout point. After it had gone on an 800% run, um, then it started ranging out. And we started for let's it's easier to see on the four hour here. So it started making a range. It first dipped down um, to it's it dipped down. Uh, well, at this time, this was the four. I think that was the four hour. Uh, nope, it was the two hour. The two hour eighty nine EMA. And then often when it comes to check the top of the range again, and cryptillions and crypto crackheads like to sell around there, because uh, after a big run, you're going to range and you're going to hit the top of the range at least twice, uh, often three or four. Um, and we knew that the second uh, correction or the second uh, bottom within a range is often deeper. Not always. It might only be about 40% of the time, but especially if it only hit the two hour 89, the next one is often deeper it would hit like the two hour 200 or on a bigger time frame, um, something like you'd have to skip to the daily because the daily uh, moving averages move up slower, right? They only get a tick every day. And so it dipped down to touch the uh, the 20 simple moving average exactly. Uh, but as it was falling, my guess was the thick yellow line because uh, a lot of times price likes to check uh, in the second dip, the 21 EMA. And uh, if you get a strong reaction off there, that means that the coin likely or the price of whatever, it doesn't mean it matter if it's the price of oil. If you get a strong reaction in a bullish type of market off of the 21 uh, daily EMA, that means the chance of going below that is pretty low uh, throughout the rest of the range. Uh, and that, that's for everything. Apple stock, Tesla stock, price of oil, price of rice, doesn't matter. Uh, so therefore, uh, in my five things, uh, so I have this yellow line drawn. See how I can move it? I drew this. Um, I I thought that, well, because of that strong reaction, the likelihood of us just writing this, maybe dipping below, dipping below, and then uh, see these little blue lines, that they, they form a long, long trend. Well, it's only about like 40 days long, but this is a clear trend. Price action stayed 100, almost 100% within here for quite a while. So these lines are probably going to mean something. Uh, so see how these... Uh, peaks and valleys stay almost perfectly within it. So if you extend those, um, and then I also connected the height of the past all-time high to the current all-time high and made this dark green trend line. And then the dark bottom trend line, the green one down here, is uh, connecting all the bottoms of the current run. And then the white triangle is simply using something like the two-hour to try to make our best guess of the formation. And, um, and cryptocurrency loves triangles. So this is an ascending triangle. A lot of times it's a descending triangle where it'll bottom twice at the same spot. So this white line would be perfectly horizontal 
and this horizontal line up here would be slanting down like see my cursor going like that so both are very common uh, ascending triangles uh, statistically are much more bullish in terms of uh, breaking out to the upside i think um uh, one of the analysts uh, for Bitcoin specifically, not across all of crypto, but I think it's something like a 70% chance of breaking up, um, regardless of being a uh, bear market or bull market that's across. So so in a bull market, like I think it would be much higher in a bear market. It would be a little lower than 70% and average out. So the chance that it's breaking up is uh, is pretty high, obviously, because everything's going up. Right? It's, it's, it's a crypto, it's an altcoin and Bitcoin uh, bull market. Everything's going up. You can throw $100 anywhere and make money. Um, but, uh, but you might have to wait five weeks to make money, right? Cause you might buy it when it's, has been screaming and then it goes down, ranges out for th four weeks and then it busts through. Right. Um, so we cryptillions and crypto crackheads like to scout coins and, uh, move, uh, you know, sell some here and then buy another coin as, uh, your favorite coin, maybe B pros going down. Then throughout all these days, the coin you scout has already exploded. You sell, and then you can buy even more B pro down here. Kind of a strategy there. Uh, for timing breakouts across many coins um, by using things like the weekly looking for crosses, <laughs> essentially of moving averages there, uh, daily and weekly. The weekly uh, create strong moves um, on both the USDT pairing and the um, the US dollar pairing. But anyway, so watching a breakout. Um, oh, and so our top three was uh, looking at the daily time frame here. So up here, I, I click the D for day. So I thought the most, the two most probable where uh, price rides this line and stays perfectly above it, but rides it and breaks out right as this blue trend line crosses the formation trend line. And because it's going to get squeezed here, squeezed. So price, you know, come down da, 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 and this yellow line forms, you know, is roughly where my yellow line is going to be. Price gets squeezed between the top here, this line and between the yellow uh, 21 EMA, it gets squeezed, 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 pop. That's my most probable. Second most probable was it dips down uh, below, maybe even tags, you know, maybe even tags uh, this line like on a wick, not the whole day closing, but like on a two hour wick, just goes boom and closes above or right at it and then keeps riding and bust out. Um, the third, uh, the third most likely was that it breaks out somewhere around here, the 20th of March, um, because I saw the weekly 10 by the 3rd of March, the trajectory would take it to the 20th of March. And a lot of times coins get squeezed between the 10 uh, like this. So if you take this general angle, even though it would be a little more curved than that, if trading view would stop freezing. So instead of getting squeezed, sandwiched between the top line and the yellow line, it would get sandwiched between the red line and the white line like this, break out on the 20th. I thought those were my three most probable, but we have two what ifs. What ifs being played off the week? Meaning, look, you typically don't have one, two, three, four, five, six green candles in a row and a breakout. Typically don't have that. You usually have to launch off of the weekly 10. After this type of move, 800%, it's pretty rare that your move can go much higher without at least touching this. It almost touched it. See how this wick almost touched this wick, you know, kind of close. But I was saying that. This candle or the next candle. So we just started this week. So if you look to the right here where my cursor says six days, 26 or. No, this is the current week. So this current week ends in six hours. So so this is one, this is one of my what ifs. I said very specifically in like three videos this week. Might have a fake out. It might scream above and close really high, like even just above and six hours might close here. And what that's going to do, if I can move my red lines here, is this weekly 10 EMA, it's going to give it a higher slope because earlier in my videos, the slope of this line was here, but it has changed because the current week is up here. But if price were to scream back down here and close there, this, the, the red line would, it would move because this is a juncture here. So it does change and it doesn't get locked into place until this six hours and 25 minutes passes and the next candle starts. Then this juncture here where my cursor is, is locked in. So I said, hey, I think one what if is this week it goes up and it closes high or maybe even the next week so that this line here does close like this. And then the next week's candle 
can come into here and then whichever week after it closes up, let's say it closes up here this week, the next week starts, I strongly anticipate that it'll come down and hit that red line because cryptolians, crypto crackheads know that when you have two really important lines crossing, so the 10, uh, the weekly 10 EMA crossing with our trend line formation here, um, the formation trend line of a triangle. So the, these uh, green, blue, blue, green lines are your trend lines. This is a formation trend line, right? So these are more temporary. These white lines will be disappeared, but we will be playing the blue, uh, the two blue and the two green for quite some time, perhaps the rest of the year. Um, those trend lines will likely hold up. Uh, but anyway, uh, so origin lines, and I have a video of that uh, in the description section uh, for future reference. But anyway, so, you know, the likelihood of this being a fake out is very high. And I think it's over 50%. Because I know, and I've been studying price action of cryptocurrency for four and a half years. Having all these green candles in a row, it, it really doesn't usually allow. I mean, the chance of the next candle being green is very low. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six. If you go to Bitcoin, and if it does go up, we're going to have a deep ass correction. Uh, I'm telling you. Uh, this isn't as healthy as it could be. So, this is the weekly chart on so Bitcoin, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the next one topped out and it came down. So, six in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven. <clears throat> Doesn't happen a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is a lot. I think that's the most in the history of Bitcoin. I remember this moment. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of traders uh, who had been in the space since like 2013 said this, it broke a record. Eight weeks in a row. So eight weeks in a row is uh, the most uh, that Bitcoin's ever gone up. So going back to Bpro. Going back to BPRO, one, two, three, four, five, we're on the sixth. I mean, I guess it could go up two more weeks and, you know, hit something like this. It could hit two cents, but that would be record-breaking crap and, you know, record-breaking type of stuff. So even though it's not necessarily record-breaking, it would be for BPRO, but trying to compare things to, you know, Big Daddy Bitcoin, the likelihood of that happening is kind of low. Uh, so that is the re basis behind my thinking. This could be a fake out. Like, actually, not could be. I think it's more probable that it is. Um, however, you always have to try to think, okay, what if I'm wrong? How could I be wrong? And if I am wrong about it being a fake out, why would I be wrong? Well, what am I missing, right? What's the case for it to be breaking out? So that's the case against it. <clears throat> so when you're, when you're trading and looking at you know, movement of money, your opinion doesn't matter. My opinion about it being unlikely because uh, six green candles in a row is not statistically likely. It doesn't matter. Um, it matters when you're trying to figure out how to play how to play uh, your investment. Sure, because you need to know your three most probable two what ifs. So that does matter in terms of being prepared. But in terms of what actually happens in that moment, none of that matters. So the reason why having those five is important is because is your personal preparedness and not reacting strongly when it does come down here and thinking it's going to go to zero. It's for you only. It, it's not for price. Uh, the price doesn't care about your opinions, your statistics, your intelligence. Um, it, it doesn't care about the kid art behind me. Like it, the price doesn't care about your opinions, right? So, uh, but, and when you are, when you do end up being wrong, you need to, you know, um, it is possible that it was very improbable and the improbable just happened, but you were prepared for it, right? So the case uh, for this breakout to continue is it's riding the daily 10. Price does often like to ride the daily 10. However, the reason why I think it's improbable is because the weekly 10, price does not like to live above it for very long and it likes to touch it. Okay, so um, let's go to something like that is uh, on the verge of breaking out similar to uh, BPRO. Uh, this is safe haven. Look. It likes to live, it likes to base off of it and launch off of it. So that's why I think Shaw is on the verge of a breakout because it just touched it. So it can go like four, like two weeks. So um, one week, two weeks, three, you know, maybe th the third week, and then it starts ranging and comes and ranges for quite a while uh, near the top. Or it could go way up here. 
uh, and then range here and wait for the 10 to catch up over the next three or four weeks like B pros doing right now. Uh, so I that so I think that Shaw safe haven is primed and ready for a breakout way more, way more than B pro is um, because this would be healthy. It just checked it. Uh, and so this is down to the two, I don't use the two hour time frame. Uh, and I suggest uh, you don't use anything below the four hour unless you're looking at a breakout uh, in as it's happening. Um, not the correction of a breakout. After a breakout's starting to have a steep curve down, I mean, using the four hour and the two hour, maybe. Uh, two hour at the very lowest, but typically you don't look at two hour for anything else but that. Um, but uh, yeah, so even on the four hour, you know, it looks like the uh, the four hour 10 and the 21, so red and yellow, I mean, it's holding up price. And, and once this uh, four hour 10 and 21 get here, it's probably going to launch. Uh, looking at the daily. Um, and it might wait one, so one day, two day, three day, four. It might take four more days to launch because it might not launch until this red line gets here. When two important lines cross, um, price might get sucked down to it and then launch right off of it. Weekly, we just saw another one that uh, it looks like it's ready to break out because it looks readier, more ready than, um, I guess readier is correct, um, the correct word in usage. Uh, so, so look, look, look at Bolt. What did it do? This is the weekly time frame. It touched the red. It touched it. It's ready. Like this is primed and ready. More primed and ready than Bolt than uh, B Pro is. Way more. And its breakout will be much healthier. And the correction it sees would be much less than B Pro, um, if B Pro does end up launching. So if B Pro does end up breaking out, you need to get your 10 bags ready and, uh, you know, perhaps start looking at, um, start looking at this upper trend line. So it breaks out this week, go, so that's only six hours, break, keeps going the next week. It could go up to one and a half cents. And honestly, in the super bullish case, it could spike up to this aggressive trend line to four cents. It could. But if it does that, it's going to come way back down here. I almost guarantee it because this is a this dark green one's very important line. It connects the two eyes. But if it were to do that and it found support here, that would mean B Pro is probably going to pass a dollar uh, before the end of this year, um, which isn't unreasonable. I mean, even though it's a penny now, the market, the price, U.S. dollar price doesn't matter. It's the market cap, and the market cap of uh, the circulating supply of B Pro, okay, is 1.8 billion. So in order to get to a dollar. The market cap only has to be 1.8 billion. When the market cap equals exactly the circulating supply of a coin, which if you don't track these things uh, and you don't even know what that means, then you don't need to be buying crypto, by the way. <laughs> you need to figure this out. You can do it on coin market cap. Um, and, uh, but anyway, so 1.8 billion market cap for a coin during the parabolic moves uh, at the end of the cycle, which... This is the last year of the cycle. So that's why the market's so hot. That's why so many retail investors are coming in because they see things going up and they like to buy, right? And, and it helps people like me, or I'm a half OG, I'm a pseudo OG, helps pseudo OGs like me, you know, find glory too, because I've been stocking up for three years as things were bottoming and uh, and rounding out of the bottom. So I'm way in the green no matter what happens, right? But anyway, um, so... Uh, yeah, so if if it does go up here and comes down, it would likely form a base here. That means B Pro's market cap could go to like four or five billion, uh, which would put it like at two and a half dollars at the end of the year. That would be super aggressive, um, because as cryptoians and crypto crackheads know, previous resistance becomes future support, and then after a while, that support becomes future resistance when price crashes back down and it'll do this again, like have resistance here. It's the way it works. It's an origin line. Um, so I still think it's more probable this is a fake, a breakout fake out. Um, and, uh, but what happens doesn't, it does, I mean, this looks pretty strong. <laughs> it's really starting to take off. I could absolutely be wrong, but here's what you do. So the statistics in my thinking, it's probable that it's a fake out. It only prepares you. So here's what you need to be prepared for, okay? Be prepared for this. Look at the week. Nothing else, just for the next six hours. When this six hours becomes zero, zero, and the next candle appears and price starts tanking, you might want to get out. 
and I say tanking, I would say a healthy amount below this white line. Because a lot of times in a strong move, when the next candle starts, it likes to scare people out for the first few hours or even the first day and then form a green candle. So the candle will start red because bots, the bots want to scare you at the very beginning of a candle and make it turn red. And then it'll skyrocket up and turn green, which is how something like this, see this long wick? That's what that means. So the, this candle opened here. So the, this is the close of the last week. Open. It went down first and screamed up. The same thing could happen. It could, it could, so if this candle here closes here, the next one starts here. It could scream down and have a big fat green dildo up your bunghole way up here. It could. So that would be like a double fake out essentially. And that could, <laughs> like, that could easily happen. Um, I think that would be like your third what if. Um, but, uh, but it, so you need to be prepared for that. So like double preparedness for a, a fake out or a double fake out, um, is that you need to be looking at the weekly. And when this six hours turns to zero, zero, you need to be prepared because that's when it's going to happen. That's when you know what's going to happen. You're not going to be able to see shit on the four hour or the daily right now. Everything is writing on the weekly right now because of this close. The close and open of weekly candles are super important and really the daily and the four hour too. Um, but the, the weekly is the one ring to rule them all really. So, um, but with uh, a coin with more price history like Bitcoin, the monthly is the, is the one ring to rule them all. But this is too, this coin's too new to even look at the monthly. So uh, be prepared. Uh, so six hours. So Eastern Standard Time in America, um, you know, that would put you right as the sun's going down um, around, uh, around eight o'clock or something like that. Um, so, oh, the time changed. Yeah. So, um, but whatever. Uh, so this ends in six hours. You need to be looking at that. Um, and uh, if, if you care, if you're somebody who just wants to keep accumulating, then you don't need to watch this, but that's what I have for this. Um, and uh, if we want to review MTB right now, it's probably just going to be ranging folks. I'll look at that on the four hour. So when you're looking at ranges, you don't go below the four hour. Um, yeah, it, the likelihood of it coming down here is pretty high. No, yeah, because it aligns with the 10. Yeah, so MTB is probably going to come down to one point, uh, 0.0015. Likely, but, oh, well, actually, maybe not. About right there, 0 0.0016. And that might be an, a pretty good buy because then it'll come back up, test the range like VPRO, come back down maybe slightly deeper. And by that point, this yellow line will be up here. Then you can catch it again. So if you sell some here, catch it again down there, it's going to range. This, this is going to range. It just went on a 500% run. I mean, this was sick, 521. Or it just, or since, actually it might hit this line first. Look, because the daily RSI is coming down to check its moving average. So the white line is the moving average, the green is the RSI. Price likes to do that. And when it skyrockets higher, the price, it'll create bearish divergence where this green line will go up like roughly to the white, but not as high as this one. So that actually is maybe even more probable. I think it's actually more probable that it hits this line before it ranges. Um, let's see what the four hours doing. Yeah, the four hour looks reset. It hit the white line. So this is ready to pop up um, and, and ride. And so it, if it pops up, this white line will create a positive slope. And what will happen is the white line over the next couple of days when it's going to race up, it will not get as high as this and the green line will not get as high as this. It'll So consider this one mountain. The next mountain, the white line will only come up to maybe here. And the green will only come up to about here, which is lower than these. And then it'll come down and start ranging out. Uh, I actually think that's more probable. I think MTV is going to hit this line, uh, but it could range out here. Um, and then silo, probably like similar stuff has happened because they ju both just had a breakout. Uh, this is the four hour. Yeah, this could pop right up and hit this line. Um, see what the dates for the same reasons. Daily. Yeah, so daily didn't even, it's starting to get a positive slope without touching this. So Silo might come all the way up to here <laughs> because the daily is staying in the green territory. See this green horizontal line where my cursor is? That means price is going up. Um, if, it, if, if the daily stays green, that means price action will, is going to make new highs. That's why the green line exists. Uh, the creator of that line made it for a reason because it's an if-then statement. If RSI this higher, higher, then new highs. And you can't really make new highs without crossing this. So since it's, it has a positive slope, but silo is probably going to hit here, here. 
which that now maybe not here. That's like a 300% run, but it's a small coin, so it can. Like it could. No, oh, it's only, no, oh, that's just more than double the price. Yeah, so we're almost at three cents. Philo could come all the way up here, folks. Um, this, this is, this is a pretty, that's good. <laughs> um, when price, when RSI doesn't even come to hit it and it's getting a positive slope, uh, yeah, what might happen is, uh, it forms a higher high on RSI to come up here and it comes down a little bit and then it screams up and the RSI, you would probably get bearish divergence on the daily. Like once it hits this, if it does hit the, hit this, let's say the RSI, like it screams up to here, right? Let's say just past this line, the RSI comes up here, like past the white line. And then it comes down to touch this and screams up one more time the price. On the, so that would be one drive here, the second drive, the highest, and the third drive, it only comes, the, the green line only comes to meet this, which is a lower high, although price made a higher high. You usually get divergence um, on the daily. Let's see what Bpro did um, on the daily RSI. See if we ever got divergence there. What I'm talking about here. So look at this big drive up. Look how high this got. Okay. Here. Came down. Kind of made a, you know, it kind of wanted to, but it made a lower. So price went higher, but RSI is lower. Then price got stuck behind it, stuck below it, stuck below it, and it's breaking out. So, you know, this this was a weak divergence. You didn't have much time to really get it. Um, but yeah, it's, and look look at the Stokes on the daily. Look, see, see how these uh, mountains here, uh, they come up to the level 53 point, Nine five, which is way over here where my cursor is. So look over there, fifty or around fifty six. Uh, yeah, eh, about fifty. So it it touches the heights of all these, and it. And so, like I said earlier, even on the Stokes and price, past resistance becomes future support. So look what happened. Stokes came and touched it and bounced off of it. So I mean, this could be a breakout. Just. Because of the weekly, I still think it's statistically more likely to be a fake. So uh, in conclusion with uh, BPRO, 8 p.m. Um, Eastern time in the United States or whatever that would equate. So this New York time, 8 o'clock New York time uh, for BPRO, if you want to take a look at it, uh, that would be the time to watch. Nothing really major is going to happen uh, before before the candle closes. Um, the likelihood of this coming back down during the candle is very low. It's, that's not what the bots are doing. So bots are on this. Um, and because uh, most trading bots, you know, that's the vast majority of volume in any coin um, because people are making money and trading while they sleep with their bots. So, and the bots are programmed to if-then statements. If if all these situations are happening or a combination or just one, if I made a bot, I would probably keep it simple. Um, if moving averages cross, then buy and sell at... 100% gain. So, which means double your money. Like I that's probably how I would play. Um but if it was a small cap, I would probably put it at like two and a half times for gain. So for a 150% move cuz that's pretty typical. Um but yeah, um so there are a lot of bots playing if then situations here and um I just I I think and a lot of them are based off the weekly. So I just I really see this coming down and hit it folks. Um but again, price does not care about what I think. Uh, so anyway, that's what we got for you. That's going through my mind. Hopefully that helps you out. And you can apply this to any coin, not just BPRO. What I'm saying applies to everything. The price of rice, the price of oil, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Now, are the price in, in things like rice or, or corn or oil or apple stock, are you ever going to see a thousand percent run in the matter of four weeks? No, it's not going to happen. Uh, penny stocks, yes. But this is kind of like a penny stock, people. Like the market cap is smaller than a penny stock. Our cap is like, you know, right now, maybe 14 million, tiny, which means Vipro has a lot of room to go. You can get some serious gains, even if you buy now and it crashes down here. By the end of the year, you're going to be like 20 extra money, uh, statistically likely. I can't, you know, that's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a random dude on the internet with a, I love hot mom shirt on with kid art in the back. But, um, but, uh, I mean, you need to be prepared. So uh, I kind of got off topic there. But 8 o'clock 
New York time. Take a look unless you're somebody who's just a hodler and you want to accumulate. But that's what we got for you. Happy Sunday. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Bye.